Hi, this is Toby again from Toby Urban Sketch and I'm bringing you another short video today. Um, particularly going to focus on how we can use simple hatching, like vertical hatching, to uh, bring forward our, our main subject or to emphasize a horizon line, um, just as a way to avoid having to use color everywhere um, and a different way of expressing some negative space. Just an example of what I mean, I'm talking about simple touches like this in the trees here, which just shows that there's something there, but keeps it really simple so that our, our foreground can come forward. Or in a video I posted in the past, or if I just find it, similar idea here behind the boat. This simple line work just brings forward, simplifies things in the background, brings forward your subject. The, the reference we're using today is uh, purple, hashtag purple blossom EUS by Kathy Wesson. So I stumbled over that a little bit, but I'll put um, a link and all the details in the description as ever. It's a really lovely little sort of stone, stone cottage with some plants and things around the outside and some trees and well shrubbery in the background we'll just see how we how we approach those as we get to them if you enjoy my videos please do like and subscribe it's a real support to my little channel thank you very much anyway let's get started i'm just going to use a winsor newton fine liner 0.3 mils today and we're going to start by just outlining where our cottage is so we've got a, a roof line I'm just going to try and get a rough edge to this because it is a lovely sort of stone cottage. So it really isn't straight, it's, it's wonky. The stones that are, are making up are rather large. Got a little flower pot at the front here. So we just need to put them in so we can then work out where the base of the house will be going, which will be about here. And we got a doorway which is about a third the height of the whole building. And again it's got very much a rough edge. And we can't actually see the bottom of it because there's a bench which comes towards us. There's lots of overlapping complicated objects going on in this which is why we need a way of simplifying something so it doesn't all become a bit much or at least that's how I approach these things and that's how it's, that what suits me and my my style best plenty of people I know will be able to brilliantly draw in every little detail and not somehow manage to overcomplicate the scene that they have in front of them so here, just getting in a few details of the shutters, and then the shape of the window. Not counted the windows, and I think I'm a couple short there, but it's the general idea which matters, not the so sort of exact specifics. So there's a hole in the wall here and a lovely lamp. And we've got complex shapes like lamps. Remember just to break it down into its constituent shapes which inevitably end up being various polygons, rhomboids in this case. A triangle with its end cut off. And then we've got a tiny bit of house we can see here. Mostly we can see that there's another shutter. This time we can see the outside of the shutter. So we've got the hinges. And the house itself comes down there. And 
And just to confuse everything about the perspective, it's actually down a big slope here. We'll come back to that, I think. There is in the background another house. This is a, a roof with a little wall at the bottom, kind of circular thing, and another one. And then there's a tree which comes up basically to the top of our sight line. We just go back over that tree line and add in little shapes along it, little collections of shapes. Just gives the concept of leaves rather than just having an outline, which you know could be anything. Now this roof will just sort out a little bit. So it's got a couple of layers to it. And it's got some tiles. So we just get in these sort of horizontal shapes in there. Yeah, I'm not counting tiles. We're just getting the idea. And as you, as you move around, you'll notice you need to darken some lines again, things which were dark before. And now not as dark as they need to be if they're a sort of main subject. So you just need to go back over lines which look a little uncultured, undone. And if we just add in a few scratchy lines, we can start to understand a bit more about the fact this is a floor which is sort of going down, so these, these lines slope off here. And they come up and they flatten off. And it helps us understand what's going on. We haven't just got the perspective wrong. It's not a flat building where we've grossly mismeasured our, our lines. It's you know, Even if you can't tell exactly what's going on, you can tell it's not wrong. It's just complicated. Okay, then we've got another bush here. Getting a vague idea of its shape. There's a sort of sign coming up, which I think I will put in. And then around that there's a whole load more greenery, see? We'll just get in another outline for now and then the actual sort of joining point of the house goes up here and this is the purple blossom is all up here which I assume is the reason for the name of the challenge So I'm just putting in lots of big shapes here because if we do add colour to the flowers here it would be good to have just some shapes to indicate that there are big flowers going on. Okay. The house has also sort of got an archway here but I'm going to leave that for now and, and I think probably completely leave it and that is something that we can cover with our sort of hatchwork lines we'll see where they're going to end up this is getting the shape of some of these horizontal bricks in we can bring forward our plant pots a sign on the door and the door goes to here with a little ledge step. And the idea of the wooden boards that it's made up of. Having done that there, we can do that on these as well. This unifying idea of vertical wooden boards. And let's just get in some 
brick shapes as well. With a cottage like this, the bricks are all different shapes and sizes. So you can show that by just overlapping them, putting them next to each other, having some cut off by the roof. Don't have to put in loads. Bring some to the edge so you can understand why the edge is a bit wonky. That just needs to come down till it meets where the shutter cuts off our field of view. Let me just bring this up a bit as well. And this plant needs more of an outline. Okay, so in what 10 minutes you've got the basic structure of our of our scene and now we need to have a little think about where we can add colour, where it's going to be blank, what's the important colours. So the the purple blossom seems silly not to put in and that purple is reflected in the colours of the wood actually, they're all slightly different shades of purple as is this. Um, I think there are things we don't need to draw colour to, which is this building here. It doesn't add much and it's quite complicated. So that can stay blank. We've got a, a hill in the background. So let's pop that in loosely. And I'm going to add a couple of trees in there. These are sort of trees and bushes you can see. I think that hill will stay blank, but we can do something else. So we can we can try a couple of places for our line work. So let's just go ahead and do that. I think firstly we'll do it on a horizon. So what I'm gonna do is just leave those trees that we've drawn in, these bushy bush areas, white, so we don't have a continuous block of line. Okay, so that's one bit done. And I think we talked about leaving this blank. So let's just try our line work here as well. Oh. Try and keep them, uh, it doesn't have to be neat, but um, sort of neatish, approximately equal but also in keeping with how the line work everywhere else is done. So immediately that's sort of saying there's something here, but don't worry about it. Gives our eyes somewhere else to look. What we can try as well is to contrast that with really bold outlines. So that we get, yeah, this is actually something to look at. Just get this rough tree line coming forward again. And then where else can we put it? I think, you know, one more place, let's try, for example, this bush at the front. What these lines sort of do is they really flatten an object. So it no longer jumps out as you necessarily as an important part of the scene but it gives your eyes something to a way of understanding what to look at you know this you follow it this way these lead in this way that leads to that so it, it, it directs you in the direction that hopefully we want people to be looking if we were to keep doing lines where else could we add them for the sake of demonstration let's do a couple more this might be doing too much but let's pop them in this this tree and this bush. That just gives us carte blanche to completely ignore the colours going on in there. And so let's see what we can do now we've done all of that. So most of the green is now blocked out. I think as ever I'm going to start with the sky.
Although even for me, this palette's a little bit mucky. Actually, the main problem is all that, that red and that neutral tint that was on there will make it very difficult for me to get the brighter colours which are in this. So we'll try again. So this is some cobalt blue. That's much better. This kind of, these vertical lines are quite graphic. So for me, you end up having to be a little neater with some of your other colours. Not necessarily in terms of making them bland and boring. So we can still go in and drop pigments in like this. No problem, that, that's still interesting fun, but if we've done if we've done these flat lines, I do think we need to be careful to to sort of leave them well outlined. It's a bit odd to have these flat, so obvious vertical lines, and then also have a bit of colour dripping through them. So just it's something to be be a little wary of. A little bit of this colour in these windows. In the in the photo, they're very dark, but we can just see we might look good with some reflections going i'm going to move to a different brush now and i'm going to just get a little bit of warmth into the into a few places in this building so places which have a an edge is where i'm going to focus on because it just shows the different areas. So just getting it most of our saturation at points where it goes from one structure to another. I hope that makes sense. Rather than having to colour everything in. And while that's still a little wet, we will get some Scarlet Lake mixed in. And there's some lovely red bricks, which I'm actually going to go back in and add some line work for, because I've just noticed I've forgotten to do that. But we can let those colours just spread. And same here, I'm just gently, I don't want this to go too much into the sky. That's all done there. This um, background building can have some colour as well since we've we've got it in there. It's a little bit lighter in colour. So it's more sort of yellow, less, less brown. So I'm just using a bit of quinacridone gold in with the raw sienna. There we go, and I'm going to um, intensify a few of these colours now as well. Again, I've seen that this this is much more intense than this, but I don't want that because it's not it's not the main subject. So we'll go back and we'll intensify the main subject, and then we'll just link up a little bit with some dabs just going through this white. There we go. On its way. Well, the sky's still a tiny bit wet. I'm going to um, bring it down to the roof a bit better. All right, and then. I do like these reflections actually, so just add a bit more blue into these windows. Now what else can we do? While, while we're waiting for things to dry, we can probably start putting some of our, our purple in. So we're gonna, I'm going to do a couple of different mixes potentially, but let's see if this first one I do works, works well enough. Mm. 
and I'm going to try, so that's Scarlet Lake and Cobalt. What I've got as well is a little bit of um, Permanent Carmine, I think this is. I think actually Permanent Carmine. There we go, with the Chromium, that's a much nicer, clearer purple. So, let's just start dabbing this in. Just varying the mix a little bit. Bit more chromium, bit more carmine. I'm happy for this one to run around a bit. And then put a gentle wash into these. So we can always come back and intensify the colour. In fact, we're going to come back and intensify the colour. And then I'm also going to make this purple and down here. And up in this plant, I'm going to try a green gold to start with. Mm, don't like that. It's a bit insipid. So instead we've got a, um, a Windsor green here. That's much better. Maybe even a little mix of the two. Just touching that in between. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and then see what it looks like. Okay, so what, what we can see, we've got a really nice sky, really intense. And I think these browns are quite quite nice as well. Um, a good level of intensity. But some of the other things, the purples dried very, very light, as has the green. So we just go back in, start being much bolder with these colours. This time I'm going to start with the green and sort of doing a little bit of mixing it with our blues and things. But definitely leaving plenty of gaps. Some of these other greens, got to leave them showing through. And now that I'm feeling braver, we'll get way more of our purple mix. And we can start putting some sort of dark purples in there. A few splashes into the sky now that it's dry. Really happy to let this run into different places. We just get a bit more of the pink and bring that in as well. Okay, now how can we bring out these things a bit more? Well, we'll just darken up this colour. So a second wash of slightly more intense purple. Introduce a bit of variation by leaving some of the lights showing through. And by just changing the colour intensity between the different structures we've got. And maybe just adding even more blue in places. I'm going to make this pot blue. And we'll pop a little bit of brown on this bench so we can tell it's something different. And then I'm going to just start adding a bit of tone around places so we can get the floor now, these stones. So I'm just using neutral tint um, to darken things down. And as we do this, 
to focus a little bit on where the shadows are. While it's wet, you can drop the dark colour in and it will move so you don't have to worry about hard edges and, and things like that. And we want some, there's plenty of shadows going on within the brush itself as well, so don't be afraid to really go in and add some really dark patches in here. Again, as it's wet, they're going to move around plenty. But nothing looks bright unless it's got dark next to it or near it. Then we also need some shade to give us some shape to our windows. So do that and under the sort of wooden struts you can imagine there'd be shade. Same all down here. On the back of here as well. And these walls can be in a bit of shade. So there we go, how are we doing so far? So I think what we are missing a little bit of is some bold greens around the place. And we did leave this tree. I'm going to try both our greens. I say we're missing bold greens. What I mean is we are missing a little bit of that sort of um, light. We've got a lot of dark. That purple is quite dominating. And we need something very different to offset that. So just going in with my two greens and you can be more clever, you can mix in blues and things um, but I think just these, these couple of greens is good enough for me today. I'm just filling in these gaps. And then I think if we can just drop a bit in here as well and get some splashes in here and we'll do some of these um, wintergreen splashes just a bit more shape in here and in here and then here where we've left our um, blank blank areas we can we can touch in the green as well just in a couple of them. Alright, so it's, it's time for another dry and then see what we are left with. So, this is it after our latest stage. And the next thing to do is just go around again with our pen and re emphasize important areas. So, we've lost our roof a bit here. It's the first thing I'm going to bring forward. And as you do this, you can just be thinking, oh, you know, can I change some of the colours, add some colour, tone. Um, and I think actually the roof is somewhere we can do some little additions. And then also the this um, purple blossom. I'm sure someone will know exactly what plant it is all these lovely variations in there just go in with the pen and you'll find if you outline dark areas and light areas it sort of brings brings those forward it highlights the lights you know i could have left a bit more in in retrospect i could have left a bit more light in this in this bush but by having a sort of way of going back and highlighting the lights and the darks with a bit more pen work we can sort of save a 
little mistake like that. I think that's done that well enough for me. And again, just re-emphasize these lines. We want the, the structural lines to look very different to our sort of funny vertical lines. And then this bench just needs to be a bit more obvious that it's not just a, a mistake. And then, like I said, I want these um, these lovely bricks just to be a bit more of a feature, which I'd forgotten to do the pen work before. And now they're there. This tree, this bush, some of these bricks, we can just embolden a couple of the lines, not necessarily all of them. And this window, we just, so some of the, the white, is in shadow now, which is fine. In fact, it, it's on purpose, but we just want to make sure the structure is visible. Probably the same with this door as well. So how's that so far? That looks pretty interesting. Now, the last thing, I think the last thing we're going to do is just bring out another colour in a couple of places and that is red and um, we've already used some red but I just feel something else needs to be lifted for this to be uh, a little bit more interesting, a little less dark and purple and brown and so I'm just gonna find reds in the image there's a few sort of scattered around in bricks, like that. And I think that simple touches like that, we just find it's lacking a little bit of something, can suddenly lift it really nicely. I think that's, that's actually done exactly what I want it to, which is nice. Maybe touch some red into here. I might just get a bit more variation in the in the pavement, in the sort of uh, stones here. And a little bit darker, just in a couple of areas to really show shadow properly. Could also do this with pen by going over a few times. If we just darken those shadows, it really lifts the light forward. I think we'll do the same under here and under here. Doesn't have to be continuous at all. Alright. Oh, there's always something else you can do. The trick is knowing that you can always stop as well. So if we darken there again, it's a nice way of just separating these two buildings out. And pop a little bit of our Scarlet Lake, our red, into the roof and to the bricks. And I think that is done. So this is just a really sort of graphic, illustrative way of doing a little cottage. And the sort of focus of the line work was simple shapes but using these vertical lines to uh, push things forward as a way of using kind of negative space not having to colour everything in just imagine if all these things that we've blocked in had colour like green or something it would be be very full on it perfectly possible to do takes a lot longer has a very different feel and um, for me I just enjoy playing with different visual tricks which give us 
something interesting. We don't have to paint the exact scene in front of us. I hope I hope you agree. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please do hit the like button and subscribe. And of course, any comments are always welcome. Thank you very much for for joining in today, and enjoy the rest of your day.